Hi friends, I've got a really bad back. I've been doing some crazy things at work. My back went and I should have taken the afternoon off but I didn't because I couldn't. I worked for myself so I, I sort of had to do this thing. It's really, really hurt it. I'm going to have to be very careful and gentle with myself this next week. It's so annoying, I've got a 10 mile race tomorrow. So I'm definitely not running that. Anyway, good news. It's been nearly 48 hours. So I'm going to take the weights off the, the mold and see how it looks. And maybe light a little fire inside and take this plastic form out. <coughs> Like it was just water that popped through and not cement. What I might do is leave the form in there and just do what I did last time and just try and get this up to 70, 80 degrees. That's a good halfway for the first day. I don't want to go crazy and I know there are air bubbles in here so I don't want to tempt fate and blow them up. Obviously this might come out as well. Oh it looks great though. I'm just absolutely loving this, this project. I think it's because it's to do with fire and molten metal. You know, it's like lava. It's fascinating. I don't really know why, but I haven't been this excited about something for a long time. And that's what life's about, really. Getting excited about things. I hope it comes across in the videos. I'm really, honestly not trying to come across as a know-it-all or an expert in any way. I am a total noob and I don't want anyone to think otherwise. I just want it to be a little bit entertaining, more in interesting than entertaining. Occasionally I might put a little funny joke in my videos. So just taking the clay out around the base. But because my back is bad, I can't really do anything serious, uh, you know, heavy lifting or more, more proper work on this. So I thought the very least I could do is light a little fire and nurse it and have fun out here with you guys. So it is really weird, right? I have hardly any subscribers and I've only just started shooting these pieces to camera where I actually talk to you. When I, weirdly, my first ever few videos on YouTube 75 videos ago, I used to talk to the camera, but I got so into doing time lapses for my paintings that I stopped doing that. And so 75 videos later, I'm back talking. And it's really nice. And even though there's no, I know you're not there right this second, live, you're watching this some time later, possibly a week later or five days later or whatever, but it's really nice to chat. I don't, because I work for myself from home, I hardly ever talk to anyone. And it's nice. Wow, it is heavy. Wow. It is heavy. Lol. That is heavy. To start things off, I bought, I think it's three or, f no, it must be four or five kilograms of aluminium. And they sent it to me in a massive chunk, so now I've got to cut it. Because I've, I've only got some, a little bit of brass and uh, I bought some bronze as a good start. I'll show you that later. Let's light a fire. I've got these on the floor. The only thing above it is 60 foot up and that's some wooden beams and a kind of a concrete sheet roof. I think we should be okay. I'm sure that's what people say before I lose their lives today. We'll be fine. Captain, we'll be fine. Just plough on, full speed ahead. Don't worry about the icebergs. I 
convert a Dyson into a blower. Another eBay purchase. I've got two Dysons. Both, one was £10 and one was £5. And the £5 one I took apart. The £10 one is my shop vacuum, so I literally vacuum the floor with it and it's brilliant. It was sold as slightly broken and it is a little bit broken, but it works fine. The £5 one I took apart and I 3D printed some bits for it and it is like the most powerful blower. I'll get this going with it in a minute. This is basically the whole motor unit from inside a Dyson DC. So I'll put the link in the description, but it's dead. it was dead easy. The whole thing came out in one go. And all I did was 3D print a, a guard for the inlet and a nozzle to kind of funnel on this side. Now, this I haven't got a lot of hope for because this gets quite warm and it blows hot air and this is PLA and PLA softens quite dramatically when it's hot. So it does pop off occasionally. But here we go. Oh God, oh God. So like I said, the PLA softens. There is a, a lip here and I've made a little counter lip that engages it but once the PLA gets warm it softens quite a lot. This is a really powerful blower. So I don't want to lose it. It took, it took like 20 hours to print that. I need to make a metal version or buy a funnel. Enough muscle out of that. Fire is lit! It'd be nice to take the plastic out sometime today. Looks like the plastic in a tube is softening up big time. In fact, it's kind of on fire at the far edge. Alright, well that's on fire. That wasn't the plan. Let's see if I can blow that out quickly. This could go either way. The outside is lovely and warm, so I'm assuming it's going to get warmer as we go up. Halfway up the void, so halfway up exactly, 124, so I'll stop that. And then uh, about an inch from the top, 122. And the surface, 98 at the top in the middle. Right on the edge, 108. And on the metal side, 90. Let's see what the 90 is. 90 at the top. 95, halfway. And around floor level, 56, 57. So I've got an airline here, and it's at 60 psi. So that's about medium to high pressure. And it's off at this needle valve. I've got, that's full up to diesel up to there and it's set to zero grams. The diesel line, here we go, the diesel's coming down the pipe. Take a little while to get there, because there's an air bubble, it's quite a long pipe. Okay, here we go. Now. Go 
hurting. So I'm going to put it right up now and see what happens to the flame. Once this is warmed up, hopefully it won't go out, but it, it could be quite cold at the moment. So it's red hot. But it's not self-igniting yet, I don't know why. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. That's a bit of fun then, isn't it? Oh, that was exciting. What are we at now? 3.30. So, I woke up with a sweat last night, worrying about the spalling in the refractory um, casting. And I've just poked around with a screwdriver in the little loose, soft areas and thankfully I poked around in a good four or five of them and sort of dusty stuff fell out but the most I could stick my screwdriver in uh, was five millimeters so because I made the thickness of the refractory at least five to ten millimeters thicker than I think I needed to I think I'm okay but it has slightly uh, given me the heebie-jeebies about lighting a fire inside it. It might have just been the fact that I had lit it too soon after pouring it, or it's just the fire got too big. I don't really know which one of those it is because I didn't really do anything different from the base and the lid, and they are perfect. They are rock solid. The only thing I can think of is the third bag of cement I used was Duff, or I mixed it wrongly, but I didn't do anything different. You can see, strangely, that the spalling only occurs in the amount in the final bag's worth. So even though I mix the lower third of the outer rim of refractory from the second bag I purchased, that's perfect, and then the spalling or cracking occurs in the final bag's worth only. So I don't know what to say about that. But I've been worrying about uh, drying it out, obviously, because I, I, I don't really know what's happened and I don't really know how to solve it or avoid it again. But I did have a thought, and it might be a silly thought, it might be way too much effort, but I mentioned earlier that I was using these 
bricks uh, as a weight on top of the mould when I was casting the refractory, just as a weight, a heavy weight. But they, and I mentioned that they are from a storage heater. And I suddenly realised, you know, it's, it's got elements. And I wonder if I can sort of put a little sandwich of fire bricks in the middle of my furnace and run that for a couple of days. Uh, so I'm going to take this apart because uh, at the very least I think it might be gentle and controllable. So I'll start obviously I'll sort of take it all apart and sort of make it safe-ish and then I will see how hot these get on the very lowest setting. Oh, it's, it's really scared me that has. Having no experience, I don't know whether I've completely ruined it. That third bag may have been duff and maybe I need to just get the chisel out and chisel a little bit out and buy another one. Please give me some advice if you know what's going on. It does look like it's um, kind of exploded from the inside out. So I'm guessing it's spalling from the either rapid heating of the steam inside or it just wasn't that rapid and the cement was a bit rubbish and couldn't cope with it. I don't know. I'm gonna take this apart. My back is a little better. Ooh. So that is showing 500 degrees centigrade halfway down those tips. So this is probably just a thermostat controller and then this would kind of come on, off, on, off, on, off, depending on what that is. So unplug. I think this might do it. If I can make this into a lovely um, curve and put the thermostat nice and safely above the element. So I'm hoping with this on off mechanism, this little heater, if I can make, build it safely, I don't want to use it if it's going to kill me, um, will give a kind of a certain amount of energy into this furnace every half an hour. It'll be in kind of short bursts, really hot, nothing, really hot, nothing. But overall that will kind of even out. There we go. So it got to 20 degrees centigrade. And then now the, it's turned back on again and the probe is really quickly warming up now. 40, 40, 41, 42, 43. And it's 44 and it's switched off. So it's going to keep going up and down, up and down. I'm well chuffed with that. This tells the probe at what temperature to click the relay to switch it off. Or is it 52, 55, 56? Now it's switched off. Okay. Okay, well it bends a lot easier, more easily now. So there's the hideous wiring. It's all safe. It's not exactly as it was in the storage heater. This is the temperature probe and it just sort of hangs in the top here. Oh, it's lovely and warm here. I can hear it cycling on and off, so it's just switched off again. And the temperature's cooling down. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of tape over this to protect the copper. because I might shut the lid. If I turn all the lights off, you can see the base. Oh, it's just switched off. Oh, there we go. So you can see the whole element. Hopefully you can see that. Blowing very gently. I mean, it's barely on. The only really hot spot is just there. And if I pop this back, It'll turn off in a minute. This is my way of regulating the temperature then. On six, which is the highest it can go, if I put the probe a little closer to these elements, it should just cycle on and off, on and off, on and off. So I'm gonna put a couple of little bits of metal. I'm gonna put one there and one there. And they will kind of keep the lid from being totally shut. Right. 
So it's at full blast. I'm going to shut the lid. Just take a quick temperature reading now. It's about 50 degrees. It might not be where that thermostat is now. That might not, this might not be warm enough at all. But I'll leave it over at night. I'll keep an eye on it for the first few hours. And we'll see how, how we go. The heat is going through. The sides are, I'd say they're tepid now. It's certainly warming up. I've never felt the sides gain any heat before. I've, uh, this hole here I've stuffed with insulation from the, um, insulation from the dismantled storage heater. And I put a little bit around there to make the hole smaller. I'll call it 55. And the outside here, 31. 55 and 31. It's at four at the moment, so it goes up to five as its maximum. I'm going to leave it at four overnight, because I think I overdid it too quickly last time. Oh, it's lovely and, lovely and warm now. I love it. So tomorrow, assuming there are no problems, I'll put it up to level five. This is just to uh, allow me to remember where the thermostat should be pointing to. I'll put a little thing on there. Basically, it's like holding your hand over a really lukewarm cup of tea. So that is not seriously hot at all. I think this is what I should have done before. But it didn't occur to me, so I didn't do it. Hi, so today is very exciting. Uh, not only have I had a shave uh, and a haircut, I've been warming up my foundry with the insides of the storage heater and I've been keeping a chart and over the last 48 hours the maximum temperature I've got it to is 250 degrees or so, 245. That's the, that's the inside refractory. So I think it's worked pretty well but I think I've reached the maximum that that device can get, get it to. So I'm going to cut short my burner experiments and at the moment my smallest nozzle is on there and I'm just going to shove it in and light it and see how we do. That's really exciting. Uh, I really hope nothing goes wrong. Um, and while it's, I, the, the, the workshop is a little bit untidy again because I've been doing several videos since the big tidy up and uh, now it's time I retidy get myself organized and while I'm doing that I can kind of keep an eye on the foundry to make sure the whole place doesn't burn down fingers crossed um, I haven't had any more problems with spalling or cracking since the first time I left it overnight with that little fire in it so hopefully it's all good and I've had at least 48 hours ish well above 100 degrees centigrade. I'm a bit nervous though, I've got to tell you. Let's try it, let's do it. I hope this isn't too near. Also, I haven't really worked out a uh, sort of system yet. All I know is that that tube fits in there. I don't know how far to have it in there yet. I'll get it all ready, then I'm going to swap lenses because this is quite wide and I want a nice clear lens. Not really sure where the nozzle should go. Okay, so the nozzle's in the middle of the wall there. I think I can go forward a bit. Plugging in the air. Opening up the valve. Okay. The pressure's showing 120. Oh, the diesel's going. God, that was quick. So I need to get my uh, torch. Oh, this is very exciting. Wish me luck. 120 PSI going in. It's stopped dead right now, at the needle valve. Diesel will get sucked up through the pipe by the siphon action of the nozzle. Here it goes. I'm gonna run it at about 10 PSI. See what happens.
That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to get my uh, my uh, better lens for that. Get some good shots. Right, I've turned it off. Wow, scary. You can see I've slightly angled the pipe down so that any drips of diesel go in rather than out onto the floor.